I am fairly confident you will never see anything like this in your entire Warzone career. Now you might be wondering, have I just acquired some sort of mega cheat, some kind of crazy VPN, or some kind of way to utterly demolish skill-based matchmaking? Or have I done something devious in the process? And the answer is that I've done absolutely nothing. And I mean that quite literally. I did absolutely nothing to get into this lobby. And I'm going to explain how that works. Now recently, the content creator Jgod did a tweet where he got 120 kills in Vondel, and the majority of the players were AFK. They just weren't there, they weren't playing, they were just standing still where they had floated in. And many people obviously assumed that Jgod was cheating or had some sort of weird VPN or some kind of hack. And in reality, this tweet was bait. He was actually in a customs lobby with the majority of his community to film this clip and use it as a practical joke for hacker hunters. And it was incredible bait, and it worked very, very well, and it was a hilarious tweet. But what a lot of people don't actually know is that these lobbies do exist, and you don't have to be in a customs with your friends to make this happen. You just have to literally do nothing. So what do I mean by that? Now, many of you know that skill-based matchmaking exists in Call of Duty, and it exists to pair people with roughly players of the same skill to create a balanced experience. But it's also ultimately the goal of a matchmaker to make sure that there are lots of players in the game and that the game is interesting and try to make it fun and engaging. And you can't do that if there are 70 people standing still on the edge of the map. Now, Call of Duty's solution to this is to have what's known as an AFK matchmaking pool. And you can get into those AFK matchmaking pool games by quite literally doing nothing. If you reach the end of any given round of Vondel, I haven't tested out Mazra, but if you go to the end of Vondel and don't press anything, don't back out, don't leave the game, don't allow yourself to be timed out, you just sit there and let the menus carry on, eventually Call of Duty randomly decides to put you into another game. And this game is filled with people who just aren't playing the game. Maybe they're watching TV, watching some TikToks on their phone at 200% volume on that god-awful PlayStation microphone. Or maybe they're just doing something else. They're making a sandwich, they're making a drink. Who knows? I don't know what the process for this is, but all I know is that everybody in this lobby are real players. They are actual accounts who play the game, but they just get put into an AFK lobby system. Uh, an entire lobby of players who aren't playing the game. Every once in a while, you'll run into somebody who is playing the game and is actually trying to play the game, or maybe they've just picked up their controller from being AFK. And these players don't tend to be particularly good because SBMM and skill-based matchmaking is completely out the window at this point. This entire lobby purely exists to make sure that players who aren't actually playing don't end up in other games. So you end up running into folks who are, you know, at home on their big TV, Maybe they've just made a sandwich and they've come back and, you know, they're just kicking around shooting things. These aren't players who play the game prolifically. They aren't players who, who play the game to try hard or anything like that. They aren't ranked players. These are just the average Joe on a weekend having a good time, which is good, which is exactly what you want for any given video game. But they just so happen to be in one of these lobbies where nobody is playing. So why do these AFK lobbies exist? They're not a cheat. It's not a VPN. It's a basic functionality of Call of Duty's matchmaking. Why would this be in the game in any way, shape, or form? And what is the goal for Call of Duty or Activision? Well, there are a number of reasons, and it really depends on how much of a skeptic you are in terms of how much you believe Call of Duty or Activision. Now, in a basic way, you could argue that this is good for the game because it removes AFK players. AFK players are sent somewhere else, they're not in the game, which means that in an average match, everybody should be running around and actually playing the game. Because the last thing you want is an AFK teammate, and the last thing other people want is AFK teammates. They could ruin the flow of the lobby or make a game less action-packed or less interesting. 
To the best of my knowledge, this could also be a method to stop people XP farming or trying to farm experience points in game by throwing them into a lobby where nothing is happening, which is also an option available. But if you're somewhat more of a cynic and you're somebody who's uh, a little bit more on the I don't believe you side of things and perhaps a little bit more on the tinfoil hat side of things, you could argue that this is a way for Call of Duty to artificially boost their engagement in their games. Because if all of these people play for however many hours, but most of those hours are spent not actually playing, they can still go to their investors and people who work with the company and say, oh, we've got this many people playing for this many thousands upon millions of hours. And those numbers would technically be legitimate because they are in a game server. For me personally, I think this is just a fairly obvious attempt to try and remove AFK players from the matchmaking pool and keep them away from games to keep them as high engagement as possible. Because battle royales are actually somewhat of a very specific formula. Between the number of players you have in the game and how quickly the zone collapses, a battle royale can be either very boring or very action-packed, depending on the number of people who are still alive and still engaging in the game. But if a third of those people aren't even playing in the first place, you're likely to get very bored and likely not to carry on. Now, it's possible that some people already know about this AFK system and matchmaking pool, and if you've seen people post screenshots of world records or world record games that they happen to have won, unless there's really footage of them showing that people are running around the map and actually fighting back, then it's not really a valid result, because these lobbies do exist. Now, personally, I don't think kill records or world records matter anyway, because the reality of those records is that most of the top players in the world could probably end up getting the same numbers. It just depends on how easy and how cheap a lobby they happen to get. And whether that's a, you know, an SBMM off style VPN or just happening to be lucky that you're matchmaking at a certain hour where most of the players aren't really that interested, it's all random. In a system with skill based matchmaking, there's no guarantee in terms of the consistency of the quality of lobby. So if you get 100 kills and everybody's basically five years old, I don't think people really find that interesting. But it also means, in my opinion, that you need video footage of these games because a screenshot just simply isn't enough because we now know that these things exist. And I guess the final question for me really is that surely disconnecting people to the main menu just makes more sense. Now in my head, I totally understand that, you know, having these players out of the matchmaking pool is probably positive for the game. But putting them onto servers that they have to run and cost money to run is what confuses me a little bit. Now, in my opinion, I have absolutely no confusion about it. Activision and Call of Duty are a money-making company, and the server costs probably don't even amount to pocket change for them. But servers still are expensive. And weirdly to me, I think adding all of these players onto some sort of random AFK server is probably more strain on their server systems and infrastructure than they probably realize, although I suppose if nobody in the game is doing anything, it probably doesn't have a huge amount of impact. Needless to say, this is some of the most confusing gameplay you'll ever watch of Warzone. I, the tactical Brit, a talented top 250 ranked player, although I'll probably drop out of that by this evening and have to work my way back in, could probably post a world record on this lobby. But why would I? Because there's no point, you know, <laughs> why would you post a lobby where nobody is fighting back? Is that not supposed to be the point of a first person shooter? But I'll leave you with that thought. Folks, if you do enjoy the video, please do subscribe and drop a like. It does support the page and the channel massively. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.